So some examples of yield grade as we look at these cattle here, I wanted to show you some pictures of a yield grade one, uh, and then you'll have an idea. Uh, you won't necessarily have to calculate the yield grade of that animal, but you can look at him and say, he or she, what is that, what's that animal look like? Does it look like this yield grade one picture, or is it maybe more of a yield grade three picture? And so the first uh, yield grade we have is a one, and you can see that Herford Mark diagram there drawing uh, very wide based, very thick ended, a lot of shape, not a lot of fat, especially right behind the shoulders. The gray steer on the right, the uh, Charlet American influenced calf, uh, as you can see, he looks just like that Herford from behind, very wide in his pins and his hip. He's very wide all the way to the ground there. As we study him from beside, we could, or the side of him, we can see that he's very, got a lot of shape and dimension to his muscle, but he's also not very fat. He doesn't have a lot of fat in his, in his brisket. He certainly doesn't have a lot of fat covering his ribs as well. And if we look at the actual uh, uh, photo of the ribeye there, you could see nice size ribeye, not as much fat uh, on that particular animal. As we begin to increase, uh, go from yield grade one to two, you can see the Simmental steer here, certainly more conditioned and fat as compared to the other one, steer. Uh, also, as we study this particular steer, he's not as heavy muscled as the previous steer as well. He's not as wide from end to end. We get to a yield grade three, another example, not as heavy muscled, a little flatter muscled type, and you can see this in this F1 Brahmin Hereford steer, uh, but certainly uh, putting on more condition and more fat, and especially behind the ribs on this particular calf. And then we move on to a yield grade four, again, lighter muscled, narrower based, but a lot more fat cover from end to end. As we get into a four, and then finally, when we get to the yield grade five, as you could see, as I mentioned earlier, this particular steer, we cut his feet off and legs off and his head off, and he's going to look like a little rectangle uh, because the fat is filled in the voids there. He's also very narrow made, narrow down his top, a lighter muscled steer as well. He just doesn't have the, the shape and dimension. And we can see that in the, the, uh, the picture of the ribeye there. A lot of fat, not a lot of muscle. That's why he's a yield grade five calf. So walking through a couple of scenarios, two different steers here. The number one, a Brahmin Hereford weighing 1,150 pounds. The second one, same breed type, Brahmin Hereford weighing 1,150 pounds. As we study these two, the first one versus the second one, the second one certainly is going to look like he's got more uh, condition, more fat cover. He certainly is fatter. Uh, so we would expect him to not be as high of yielding or good a yielding as the, the uh, number one steer. Uh, quality grade, we've got to look at, well, what's their breed type in these, in these cattle? Uh, and, and again, Brahmin Hereford cattle will grade. Now, there's not as high a percentage of a straight British or English animal, but they will grade. And so, you know, we would probably assign these cattle just based off of the picture. Maybe there's a 50-50 chance if they've got enough fat, both of these cattle do, that one of them is going to be choice and the other one would be select. So if I had to pick the one I was going to choose for choice, I'd probably choose the number two because it looks like he is fatter, substantially fatter than the uh, number one steer. So what did it look like? Well. Number two certainly was the, uh, the, the calf that had more fat, external fat, and he ended up a yield grade four, whereas the first one ended up a uh, yield grade two. Now as we look at marbling, uh, the uh, first steer actually was heavier marbling, but leaner, versus the number two steer that didn't have as much marbling, ended up being standard there. And then the ribeye area difference between the two, the number one was heavier muscled than the number two. So between those two steers, there was about 70 pounds of fat difference between them. So a substantial amount of difference in cutability between those two calves. And that's why as we look at this grid and we look at yield grade as we go to these cattle, and you can see the second steer was a yield grade four, the first was a yield grade two. Yield grade two is a $2 premium, a four is a $10 discount. So there was a $12 difference between those uh, and on a, um, 750 pound or 800 pound carcass, uh, $12, again, is gonna get you to uh, looking at that fat difference there. And so that's why we see those discounts in those cattle.
Again, let's take this grid and let's apply it to what the actual carcass was. And steer one in this particular scenario, based off of this grid price, was worth $267 more than steer number two when we hung him on the rail. And that was because we had a difference in $87 between a yield grade two and a four. Uh, difference between a choice and standard was $145. We had a, uh, a side brand on the number one calf, which there's a little bit of a deduct or difference in value there. Uh, we had injection site blemish in two, there was some trim, and the tenderness, uh, one was tough, or uh, one was tender and two was tough there. Uh, the value on tough steaks, it's hard to tell, but we know consumers don't like to chew and chew and chew meat there. And so again, that gives you a scenario and an idea as we walk through it, and then we'll also look at some videos on these cattle to decide, uh, try to practice uh, live grading, uh, both on uh, quality grading and yield grading of cattle.